Hey there, welcome to CT Collectibles. I am C. I'm T. And we're going to start... Uh, baseball's back! And yay! Yay! Alright. Um, and so we've got a hustle, but I think we're we're able to get in our, uh, our top five at every position. If we start now and double time it and get a couple done per week. You think we can do this? Yes. yes. Alright, yes, I love it. Can. I love it. Well, we better because we already have a lot of them done. But we'll start off today with our top five pitchers for 2022. So uh, last year was a, a fun year for pitchers. I saw some mm -hmm. outstanding performances. It'll be interesting to see if the people that did well last year that maybe outperformed or overdid themselves a little bit are able to repeat this year. So what do you think? There's yes. a lot of no-hitters last year. And there were a lot of them. There were a lot. Is that good pitching or bad hitting? Well, that's... Or can it be both? It's both, I guess. All right, let's start it off. So we've got a couple honorable mentions here. Before we get into our top five, there's so many pitchers, and you know, yeah, we, we we gotta cover a few guys that are maybe on the bubble here, so we can uh, address a few questions, and uh, you know, we'll just we'll just take it take it uh, one by one here as we see. So Jack Wheeler had a pretty nice year last year. He did. 278 ERA, struck out about 30% of the guys that he faced, only walked about 5%. So that strikeout to base on balls ratio was about 23%. Anything above 20 is elite level. 75% of the people that reach base stayed there and really we're looking for like um something like 80 percent so his xfip was right in line with his era terrific season overall but the projections for 2022 have him pitching at a 366 era level he's walking a little bit more striking out a little bit less the projections are not buying his spike last year in the strikeout per nine and that drop in his walks per nine so it was a very good season for him doesn't look repeatable until he repeats it then it looks repeatable once all the good pitchers retire, he he could definitely make himself what? better. Yeah. Oh, so once all the good players are out of the way, then he can be. Then he can be. How about he just pitches like he did last year? The projections don't think it's repeatable. If he's able to do what he did last year, another year, then maybe we can start putting him in that top five. Right now, awesome innings eater, but he's he's on he's he's probably a top ten guy, but he's not top five guy just yet. Unless again, he's what he did last year, he can repeat. He's got to prove it, I think. So, all right. Moving on to another player that had a very nice season. Another top 10 guy, probably. And another one on the same team. And on the same team, Phillies. My gosh. So, <laughs> they're going to need really good pitching because everybody they're bringing in can't play defense. So, Schwarbs and who else have they who have they brought in? They don't have, they, they don't care about defense anymore. It's like, we're just going to either strike guys out and then we're going to hit home runs. That's their game plan at this point here. So, last year, 4.63 ERA. Okay, why is he on this? Why is he even in the top 10 here? 337 XFIP, all right? Batters got kind of lucky against him with a 308 BABIP. Uh, what he could control was very good. That elite level 24% strikeout to walk ratio. Maybe that's why he's on because it's an elite level. Um... That's why he's on. That's why he's on. Now, 66% of the the the, uh, the the players that reached base, they stayed there. That is low. He got unlucky. You want to be up around 80%. And so this is where you see that difference in ERA and XFIP. The, the, uh, the, the projections for 2022, they recognize that, have him back under a 4 ERA, normalize that bat up a little bit here. I'm still giving him darn near elite level strikeout to walk ratios here. Up that left on ball percentage. Could be a top 10 pitcher, but again, we're looking for top 5 here. But bubblish, bubblish. And so again, we want to talk about some of these guys. We can't just talk about five pitchers and get out of here can we i'm kind of thinking about the left on base part right where this um, is a good guy to talk about then but no Aaron nola it kind of it kind of depends on whether you don't let any people get on base or you just That's leave a, them on base if they get right. on base so so leaving guys on base is kind of a skill so not letting him get on the base in the first place well, there's a guy on this list that's really good at that doesn't even let him get there but once they get on base, then there's kind of a league average of around 80%, or 75 or 80%. And if you get too much above that, then you're getting really, really fortunate. And let's just segue into Robbie Ray with that one right here. Last year, your American League Cy Young Award winner uh, would, is what he did repeatable, okay? 284 ERA was amazing. His XFIP was a little bit higher at that 3.3 level. Uh, batters didn't have a whole lot of success with the balls they put into play. Excellent strikeout ratio, a ridiculous walk walk rate as well, and just low for him. And this is a guy that on his first career averages about four walks per nine innings. And last year he was under two, or he was about two and a half. So as our, our notes say here, so he's been a double digit strikeout guy, but he's walking the, the the heck out of everybody. And last year he didn't. Everything really came together, and so he had that elite walk to strikeout ratio. Ninety percent of the players that reached base stayed there. That is ridiculously high and, and probably not repeatable and so the projections recognize that have them at about it and all these projections come from fan graphs this is the steamer projections okay so this isn't us like with a pencil or calculator trying to figure this out we cheated we took it from a projection system that does it every year and does a nice job so um 370 ra 
and his XFIP is right in there. The BABIP uh, rising just a little bit. And so he, no doubt he was good. No question he can be good again. Top five, so many things have to go right. So many things have to, he has to repeat. So many things that uh, he's never done before until last year uh, that it's tough to put him in the top five. Now, that's kind of what happens. When players get an MVP or a Cy Young Award, they do something crazy that the, that's just not repeatable. That's why you win like one of them, mm-hmm. right? Do you think he's going to get another Cy Young if those predictions are right? Well, well, or these, anything close If to these it. projections are right, then he will not get another Cy Young. If he is able to repeat last year, walking barely anybody and leaving everybody on well, base. He got, he got the Cy Young with those stats, so he's probably going to exactly. get it again. Unless somebody else <laughs> comes in and takes over his place. What typically will happen is these numbers will regress to his career average, or at least more of a league average type thing. And then someone else will outperform and take it. And it's hard to predict who that will be. But we're trying. We're trying to predict and get this right, so I don't know. This might be him. <laughs> Who knows? He's going to. He just got traded to the Giants. That's no hitter. A, that is a no hitter, and it is a pitcher's park that he just went to. So I mean, Chicago, they they basically got Carlos Rodon to like help their pitching. Well, obviously. Um. So you often do that. You often get pitchers to help your pitching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if they traded him to the Giants, who are they gonna get? Who are they gonna? Are they gonna? Like, well, there's a few guys that they've got ready to go here, and so Radon was a little bit expendable, especially at his price, because they brought in some other pieces they they felt they needed. But last year he was amazing, 2.37 ERA. That xFIP was up there a little over three, so nearly a runner, call it a .8 differential. Babbitt strikeout rate was insane. That strikeout to walk rate was incredible. That's amazing. amazing stuff. And really a terrific season overall. 82% of the guys that got on base stayed there. So a lot of Which these things are good. it's terrific. A lot of these things are sustainable, except for the fact he's never done any of this before. <laughs> this is his first se- is uh it was the first time since his uh um rookie year, rookie year with a sub four ERA and his first um full season. Double with a uh, with a double digit strikeout in the uh, strikeouts per nine. So, so as you, he never done any of this before. If he does it again, then you have to start saying, yeah, this is top five pitcher type stuff. But he's never done, you know, with the strikeouts with the walk rate. He's never combined those the way like the way he did last year. So if he could throw some more no hitters in San Fran. So anyways, the projections have him at about three and a half ERA. That Babbitt normalizing. Oh, you said New York. Are you thinking about did football? I? San Fran. I'm in San Fran. Did I say New York? Yeah, you're thinking about football. Yeah, I could be the New York Football Giants. I'm talking about the San Francisco Baseball Giants. All right, with I, that, I was, wa- <laughs> the Yan- I, th- I was thinking the Yankees are going to get even better. Look for the strikeout to come down a little bit. The Yankees aren't too happy because they're not getting a lot better here. <laughs> um, Aaron well, yeah, Judge, they lost Aaron Rochello and um, Gary Sanchez. Yeah, they didn't lose them. They got something in return for them. They did, oh. Josh Johnson just hit his first spring training bomb. So, oh, cool. so strikeout rate looks like to come down a little bit. Walk rate maybe rise a little bit. Back to his career averages. Unless last year he is a different pitcher and that maintains, but you know it, 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 that's not the case until proven otherwise. Need to see it another year. So still a, a elite level top ten pitcher, right? But just not our top five yet. He was in your top five. We had to fight over this one a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's get into our top five. I think I talked into Sheen Bieber at five. Well, this is his top five. This is my top five. His top five starts with Rodon. Mine stops with Bieber. And then I think Bieber's we're, still a great player, though. Absolutely. We were, we're in agreement with the uh, with the top four here. So um, Hurt last year. So not a full season, but let's see if he can come back. So uh, in the games he did play, just over three ERA XFIP. Babip, um, actually, he was getting a little unlucky against the league, striking out a ton of guys, walking a decent amount, but not anything crazy. He's about a two or three walk per nine guy. Uh, 24% oh, strikeout to walk rate, leaving 80% of guys on ball. So not getting terribly lucky or unlucky. I'm leaning towards a little unlucky. This year they have them kind of in that same area here, 3.3 ERA. Regular BABIP, that should be 0.295. Uh, striking out about 30% of the players, walking about six. Elite level strikeout, uh, strikeout to ball ratio, leaving 75% of balls on base. So the AO Central is loading up. They're bringing in some bats here. But if he gets back to his elite self, which I believe he can do, uh, then we are talking about a top five type picture. So we'll see who's right on that one. If uh, the Fieber or Rodon get into the top five, you know, if they're both in there, then we're both pretty right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're more right. But um, you know, they're both excellent pitchers. It could certainly happen. Our number four pitcher, Max Scherzer. This is boring, right? No, we got a dynamic duo. Exactly. So very, very, very boring to put Max Scherzer in there. But he's been so good and doing for so long and he just keeps repeating himself and so it's like somebody's going to outperform and, and leap, leap, leap ahead of him but how do you predict who's going to do that so for our purposes right now we just go with uh we just go with the guys that have done it before so in 2021 two and a half era uh absolute, you know he, it was a little bit higher there with the uh with a babbit that's kind of low so a 
he was getting a little bit lucky on those balls in play. They weren't falling, hitting the grass as much as they would in a normal season, but he's striking out a ton of guys, walking very few for a 28% strikeout to, to walk ratio. Again, 85% of the people that get on base uh, stay there. And so, again, if you re regress that a little bit to that 80% level, then you can see where that XFIP rises just a little bit here. So ERA this year, projecting in that 3.5 range, I think he probably beats that if you uh, bump, bump his BABIP up there. But the strikeout walk rates, elite level stuff here left on base. And so I think he can finish in the top five again, especially with that uh, – that Dodgers lineup and some of the some of the guys they brought in to play uh, play defense for them. You're moving Trey Turner back to short, and you've got what the Turner left side and the you know Taylor and. But also, if he keeps on doing what he's doing, Freddie at first. Mm -hmm, that's, that, that, that was a pretty crazy trade. That's a pretty, not even a trade. Free agent signing here. So oh, all right, wasn't a trade. No, okay. Wasn't a trade. It's free agent signing. So well, all right. then, well, if Scherzer keeps on doing this for the for his past few for his next few years, <laughs> right. Is he going to be a Hall of Famer? But he already is. If he, he stopped right is. now, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, now, here's the deal. He's been doing this pretty consistently since, like, 2008. So it's tough to bet against him. Now, if he starts to fall off for a couple of years, that's when you say, all right, not not a not a top pitcher anymore. But as long as he's doing what he's doing, you know, it's, it's, you just it, 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 at some point the wheels fall off. I'm just not going to bet that it's this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, number number what are we talking about? Number three here. All right, we, we we had a little battle on two and three here, but conceded on on this one for you. This was probably my number one or two guy. Over, oh, no, my, 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 this was my number two, but you had you had someone else in number two. That's all right. fine. That's all good. We'll, yes. we'll, we're just having some fun here. Garrett Cole is a workhorse, three point two ERA, sub three xFIP. A little bit unlucky on the batting average and balls of play, strikeout rate and ball rate. That's an elite level. Uh, that's an elite level metric there. And uh, you know, left on base percentage seems 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 fine. It's, and so, it's pretty good. yeah, so nothing out of the ordinary here. Out of the ordinary for regular pitchers, but you know, he's not ordinary. He's awesome. So, uh, the projections this year kind of have him in An that ordinary awesome pitcher. <laughs> ordinary awesome pitcher. So this year the projections are going to keep him kind of the same here. So the BABIP's a, you know a little bit different regards towards league average, but the strikeout pretty to walk later again strikeouts. elite. Whatever he was in the he was uh, Cy Young Award kind of the front runner up until the last few weeks of the season. Robert Ray just kept doing what he was doing. So, um, but elite level arm, there's no question about it. Left on base percentage, whatever you get on, you're probably uh, you're probably staying there for the most part. And so, um, no slouch being top three. I think he's top two. But no slouch being top three here. So, all right, before we get to the top two, Tom, here's a couple guys that I think in the near future we could see on this list. Mm -hmm. Do you know who these guys are? I can read right here. Dylan Cease, <laughs> yeah, Julio go. Urias, and Shane Baz. All right. Hey, that's pretty good because when, I didn't have I, the first names I, on there. When I didn't look at the um, when I didn't look at the last names, I didn't see Baz in there. Okay. And I thought that was Tyler Glass. Now. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, so it, he might it be looks a little. A lot like him. He little passes. He could definitely be his brother without the same name. It could be brother from another mother. Is that how we go? Sure. Something like that. So Dylan Cease, he was a top ten pitcher last year already. Uh, he's got a very, uh, he's got an elite level strikeout to walk rate. That walk rate's a little bit high. If he can bring that into, you know, call it two, two and a half. I mean, you are talking about a guy that could creep into that top five at some point here. So double digit strikeouts per nine, you know, three fifty x fit. That uh, that White Sox offense could help. I think he just continues to get better. This is a guy that I like a ton here, Julio Urias. He was 11th in that strikeout to walk rate, just behind Dylan Cease. Now he's on a he was on a team, the Dodgers, that uh, that won a lot of games last year. So he ended up winning 20 games. Wow. I know, I know. So that's why we don't look at wins a whole lot. <laughs> doesn't strike out a ton of guys, but he doesn't walk anybody. That walk rate is right up there with the best in the game, Corbin Burns and Max Scherzer. You know that like Corbin Burns, I don't know which season it was like this well, last season or two yeah. seasons ago when Corbin Burns went through like. A quarter of the season where they He didn't walk really, anybody. He didn't walk anybody. Yeah, what was it like 36 it was like 30, innings so, or something? It was just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, insane stuff. And so, Willie Raz, he was right there with them. And so, again, not that overpowering fastball, but here's a player that, uh, with that pinpoint control, um, he could find himself in that uh, in that top of the uh, top five, you yeah, know, at some point there. Julio Urias also exactly. the, the, la Shame. the last um, pitch of the 2020 World Series. There it is. So, all right, Shane Bass, another guy that could sneak in here at some point. Um, it'll be kind of kind of interesting to see what happens here. You know, over the last last year, he played in three levels of of, of Major League Baseball. Started out at Double A, went to Triple A, and then he was up in the majors and he pitched really well in the Olympics as well. That, and he did that all in the same year. Yes, yes. Well, that's what happens. You start Olympics, doing really well. He just got, he just got moved. He just got moved up, okay, right? Okay, so where would the Olympics be in that? So it'd be 
It's oh like, no, there, there's it's not. Like, no, double it's, A, triple A, MLB, it's probably not MLB. even probably not even double A stuff. But he he not was even double A. Well, they bring you know, they bring over a lot of majors and minor league players, but overall, maybe it's somewhere in the minor league level. But but anyways, strike double A and a half. Thirty percent. If you if you take away his strikeout percentage, take away uh, subtract his walk percentage from his strikeout percentage, thirty percent. That's about as high as we've seen. Amazing stuff. Striking out double digits doesn't walk anybody. The Rays have magic with their pitchers here. So let's see what happens with with Shane Baz, the player that I like a lot going into this season here. He's got the control, he's got the strikeouts, and he's shown success here. So um, this is a, a player that I think could really make some uh, make some noise this year. And you know, again, the Rays have a way. And uh, they, they got a few good players on their team to, uh, to help them out. Could be a lot of fun to watch. And so there's other players, but, you know, we, we, you know, we, we can only, you know, how many, we can't cover every pitcher, can we? No, we can't. We cannot. That, that was the answer I was waiting that, for. That, that's only, that's, All right. We're only doing like seven pitchers, although we're... Well, we're doing a few bonus here. So. Eleven. So. Yeah, something like that. So, all right, let's get into our top two here. Corbin Burns. All right, you you fought for him and you got him. I like it. I don't I don't mind this one at all. So, okay, so... so he, was, was, he was Cy Young Award winner. So... He's good. It was... 2020 when he threw like no walk. No, it was last year. It was last year? Yeah, why, no. Why he, he, you don't win a Cy Young walking people, so. Why it was his, like, is it 5.2? So he just started throwing a lot of walks. Well, he walked, yeah. he walked a few people, but that's a really, really low number. So out of every 100, uh, one, every, we, every 100 batters, he walked five. Then how come Julio Urias right? got 1.5? He walked even less. So anyways, oh. all right. Two and a half ERA, pitched a little bit better than that. Got a little bit unlucky with the uh, BABIP. Got a little bit unlucky with the left on base. This year, they're showing a little bit of regression for him, but still right around a 3 ERA with a 300 BABIP. That strikeout to walk ratio, elite level stuff. So this is, I mean, this is elite, elite, I guess. And then over 20, again, elite. And so maybe they're being a little, there, was not, there wasn't a lot in here saying that he has to regress a ton. So this may be a little bit light. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, the, the, the one thing that you're know, pointing out to your, to your point about the walk rate, uh, 1.82 base on balls per nine was half of the previous two years. And so they're expecting him to walk a few more players here. Maybe not have another, what, 36 inning streak or whatever without uh, without giving up a walk. So maybe there has to be some regression in there. If it does, then that that's where, that's where the ERA and the XFIP and stuff rises just a little bit. Because more people are getting on base. And even if they score at the same rate, more people on base are going to score a little bit more. But I, I, I like them. Repeat the science. Someone's probably going to do something crazy to, to snake that from them. Could be uh, some of his own teammates. I mean, there's 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 four guys on that team that could do it. And what are those? I'm thinking Brandon Woodruff. Brandon... That's the next one. Brandon Woodruff is probably the guy that could uh, that could overtake it if someone were to. Uh, Freddie Peralta? Peralta, Josh Hader, and Hader won't. He's a reliever. Oh yeah, you can't watch it. Watch, watch for it, a, watch for, for watch for Aaron Ashby. I don't know if he's gonna win the Cy Young. No, no, but season. he's gonna be awesome, I think. But how, is it possible for a, le- a relief pitcher or a sure. closing pitcher to win the Cy Young? Absolutely. Wow, has anybody done it? Well, Tom, that's a great question, and without looking it up. <laughs> and pausing or anything like that. I'm sure really smooth at it. So, of course, in 2003, Eric Gagne was a reliever who won the Cy Young Award winner. Can you think of any others? Dennis Eckersley? Oh, very good. I think Dennis Eckersley was also a, a, a reliever that won a Cy Young Award. I'm sure there's others, but, you know, we, we, you know, off the top of our head, we're probably not going to come up with names like Raleigh Fingers, Willie Hernandez, Steve Bedrosian, and Mark Davis. So we're just guessing here. So, again, de- definitely not a, not a quick little edit or anything like that. So, all right, should we get to our number one pitcher? Yes. All right, number one pitcher. Oh, my gosh. Uh, who knew? I didn't see that coming. So, um, let's see. Even Superman doesn't have these numbers. One ERA. Does Superman even play baseball? If he did, this is what he would look like. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, exactly. That's Strike super- 45% of the time, got by up into the box. They, they they left, right, right back to the dugout. Left, right, left, right. They, Bye-bye. They, exactly. doesn't walk anybody. That strikeout to walk rate, 41%. Yeah. Um, what, what, what do you do? It's, it's, 87% it's, left on base. You get on base, just, just just take a seat. Pull up a chair. You're staying there. You're not getting You're not getting home. This year, maybe he's not superhuman. Maybe it's a two and a half ERA. Uh, maybe he's only, you know, the 30% you know, strikeout to rock rate, which is still elite, which still makes him the number one pitcher in baseball. He is gearing up for opening day. He's already throwing 100 miles per hour. The only way he doesn't do this is if he misses more time. And I'm not going to predict that. I don't know. Not going to predict that one. Just going to go with it. Why is it saying the 2021 rank not good when it's number one? Well, his rank overall was not good at the end of the season because, because he got hurt right away. But when he was pitching, well, not right away, he pitched like half a season. Well, how's he doing but when he was, so, so he's like, so it's like, if you say his 21 rank is like 40, you know, 40th or something like that, you'd be like, no, that's not good. But when you look at the numbers, it's well, like, okay. How's he doing in spring training right now? 
Um, he's throwing batting practice and he's throwing 100 miles per hour and, pe- and making people yeah. look stupid. He's right back at it. Why are those our predictions then? It should be what? at least a 1.9 year if he's doing that no, that's already. Not, it's not my projection. It's this is the steamer on Fangraphs. That's their, proje- their projection. It doesn't matter. He's still number one. Okay, Fangraphs. Terrific. Way to go, Fangraphs. All right, there's our top five pitchers. You have a different pitcher in mind? Leave it in the comments. Happy to discuss. I want to hear other names as well. So. All right, that's what we got for you. It's my it's my birthday today, so you have to Tomorrow. like it. Well, you were rec- we're loading this for Monday, which is my birthday. Oh, so yeah. um, the YouTube's terms of service is you have to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll be back at you real soon with some first baseman or catchers, and then first baseman. So we got for you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.